Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel, we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. And today we're going to be talking about Mercury retrograde in Virgo. Mercury retrograde did begin with the start of Virgo season yesterday, as I'm filming this, which would be the 23rd of August. And this energy goes through November, or sorry, uh, <laughs> September 14th. I don't know why I said November there. Um, I feel like I'm feeling into eclipse season maybe with that. Uh, there's, there's always a reason for everything that we say, these Freudian slips as we call them. So uh, something connected with the energy of November for, uh, for many of us as we're moving through Mercury retrograde. And uh, as we move closer to those November energies, perhaps we will see uh, what it is that I'm talking about here. If anybody knows anything major that's going on in November, as I said, I'm terrible like this as far as like looking ahead goes. Like I'm literally living every day as today. <laughs> <laughs> taking everything as it comes. So I'm not looking way ahead. I know the I know eclipse season's coming up in the fall and I do believe that it is in November that we're going to be having um a powerful set of eclipses. So somebody let me know if I'm accurate about that. Maybe that's where the Freudian slip was, um, was referring to that or some other major astrological event that's going on in November. So you guys drop something in the comments if there's something that that struck a nerve with. As I'm talking about connecting this with the energies of November, it could also be that things that are going on during Mercury retrograde will come to a head in November or that'll be the sort of climax of some sort of energies for certain people or individuals individuals, um, perhaps realizations that are coming through this Mercury retrograde is going to be huge when it comes to uh, really seeing truth and getting clarity in areas of our lives where that clarity is needed. It is also going to be, there's a major theme highlighted here as far as balancing the mind and the emotions. And we're working powerfully with the Pisces energies as well. As we're moving through this Mercury retrograde, the Pisces energies, Neptune's energies, uh, the ruler of Pisces, Saturn's energies, we got a lot going on here folks we have one third of the way into mercury retrograde we have the full moon in pisces and that feels like a big release point of energy during this mercury retrograde we are going to be god willing doing a uh, a video on the energies of the blue moon full moon in pisces uh separately but it is a big energy that's intertwined with the energies of of Mercury retrograde and kind of like we said that that release point of energy as we begin moving through these energies Mercury retrograde begins opposing Neptune retrograde in Pisces at 21 degrees of Virgo and it completes at 8 degrees of Virgo op opposing Saturn retrograde in Pisces so here we see once again these Piscean energies and themes coming through here and this energy of of course Neptune and uh, Saturn as well Something interesting as Mercury begins its retrograde is that Mercury is also going to be sextile the moon in Scorpio and trining Jupiter in a loose connection to Mars and Virgo. And it's sort of a thing, I, as I'm sure those of you who are not new to this channel know that I like to really look into the energies of the day that a planet goes retrograde, as well as oftentimes the day that they're completing to kind of get an understanding of a journey here. And so this is a really beautiful journey when we're looking at Mercury beginning this retrograde, not only that it's beginning on Virgo season, right, the 23rd, as we said, and the 23rd being that this is 2023, if we shorten 2023 to its abbreviation, right, we have 82323, which is a really powerful energy. It is an energy that carries the energies of the fives, right, when we add the two and the three, the energy of the two when we add all the numbers together. And it also has a powerful creational type energy to me when we're looking at the two energies that become the third energy, right? Two, three, uh, the energy of creation. We talk about 2023, especially when we're working with that energy of recoding the matrix, right? And we've been working with the coding of the ones, the twos, and the zeros since 2020. Now we see the three coming through, which is that energy of we were recoding, reformatting, and now we are birthing those new creations as we're moving through 2023. So the 82323 feels like a really big, uh, powerful 
powerful number that we are working with as Mercury begins this retrograde. And sextile the moon in Scorpio, that's where we once again get this energy, this feel for this, this deep emotional energy that we're, we're touching during Mercury retrograde. And uh, Mercury is, of course, an air sign. Virgo is a sign that Mercury rules. And so we know when we have a sign that Mercury rules, that Mercury is going retrograde in, we're going to feel that retrograde that much more acutely. And with the energy of Virgo, we have that grounded mental energy, right? Being an earth sign ruled by an air planet. So we have elements of both earth and air here. When we're working through and working with this energy of Mercury retrograding in the sign of Virgo, but we're, we're really going to be feeling that. And Virgo is, of course, a sign that is generally being ruled by Mercury, uh, rather linear, rather analytical. It is Mercury is exalted in Virgo, meaning that Mercury's energy functions best in the sign of Virgo, just because of Virgo's ability to really look at things, to laser focus, to take all of that mental energy that can get kind of scattered sometimes in Gemini and really kind of like point that laser beam at what's important and focus all of that energy in a, in a way that is, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for here? Um, productive. It's a very productive energy. But when we have a retrograde, we're kind of flipping that energy on its head in a sense, right? So we're operating more from our intuitive feeling energy, um, generally speaking. Unless, of course, we have we have a Mercury retrograde in our charts, and then our, we may already work more with that intuitive energy, with that with that feeling energy. In which case, uh, it may give us more of a it may flip us in the opposite direction and allow us more of that linear processing. But whichever way we slice it or dice it, right? We are flip flopping the way that our mind generally works and the way that our communication style generally works as well. And this is part of the reason why Mercury retrograde has a reputation for um, being kind of tongue tying people, making communication, uh, errors in communication, difficulty in communication, uh, difficulty in technology, especially technologies that rule communication. Uh, these are some of the things that every single Mercury retrograde we want to be aware of and sort of watch out for. But we also want to be aware that if these if these issues are coming up, they were there to begin with. Mercury is not creating them. Mercury is just highlighting them oftentimes so that we can address them. And that's a lot about what this Mercury retrograde, uh, the, the feel of this energy, what it's all about is really utilizing that Virgo energy to, to comb through with a fine tooth comb everything that we're doing, um, the actions that we're taking, the where we are investing our time, our mental focus, absolutely, our emotions, right, with this emotional aspect and our energy and really seeing what's working and what's not and giving that giving that intense Virgo focus, especially once Mercury, Mercury comes out of retrograde on the 14th toward the things that matter the most. All right, so it's a very Seven of Pentacles kind of vibe, really um, going through, reviewing everything. This is a time Mercury retrograde is famous for um, things that we don't see. And so we want to like really look at if we are signing contracts, if we are making agreements during this time, make sure that you're reading the fine print, because a lot of times if we don't, there's something that gets squeezed by. And so really pay attention to that. Um, save major decisions if you can and major commitments for after the retrograde is passed. We all know that life doesn't necessarily work like that and we can't always do that. So just be very aware. I want to put that caveat out right now. Now, moving back to this energy here, the emotional aspect of this energy, right? With that Scorpio, uh, the day that Mercury goes rex, um, retrograde in that sextile to the moon in Scorpio, bringing up those deep-seated emotions. Like we talk about, another thing that Mercury retrograde can be famous for is our exes coming back around, right? And not just our exes as far as partners go, but uh, any, any people of meaning in our lives that once held meaning to us. Uh, and the reason for that is that we do revisit the past in a way, right? Because we're re reviewing things. We're looking back over things. We're seeing and understanding the things that we missed. And a lot of times in the subconscious of our minds, uh, things that are unfinished just kind of sit there and fester in the background. And so they're brought to the forefront during Mercury retrograde or any of the retrogrades, right? With Venus retrograde at the same time, the energy of love, relationships, partnership really at the forefront. So uh, this is like double time for exes and things like that coming back. 
Uh, it's it was already there it's just being being brought to the surface and then we're called to act on it we're called we're, especially with the emotional aspect of this mercury retrograde with all of this pisces energy we're really being called to to uh seek closure where closure is necessary or feels like it's needed so we can look into that with jupiter there's this beautiful beneficial energy here as well and mars in virgo is really assisting us in getting things done this retrograde as we said is very much about heart bringing harmony between the mind and the emotions and really healing and flushing out and balancing the emotions and the way we utilize and work with the masculine and the feminine right the logic and the intuition all of this type of energy but it's also very much about harmonizing the actions with the mind and the emotions and so are our actions aligned with with our mind and emotions which is another way of saying are we acting in integrity are we acting in accordance with our truth this is a very big theme that's going to be coming up for people and anyone who hasn't yet check out the collective reading that i did i was tapping into the energies of mercury retrograde and the full blue moon in pisces um it's so whatever reading was posted right before this it was uh, titled a collective reading it was about stepping into our power um standing standing in our power speaking our truth uh that those themes of integrity come through came through really powerfully in that reading it's really really important that energy of integrity and that energy of walking our talk and standing behind our truth all right let's see what else is there anything else we want to say yeah we have that so saturn and pisces it's it's really powerful not only that so mercury is beginning this retrograde opposing neptune retrograde and as we know neptune in retrograde is less about illusion which neptune direct often is and more about peeling away the illusion right seeing through the illusion so this is where we see that um and it's like what this mercury retrograde is showing us is the way that it's helping us peel back that illusion and see through that illusion is by showing us the truth of our emotions, the truth of our hearts. All right. So we start out with that energy. And then at the end of this retrograde, we're opposing Saturn retrograde, also in the sign of Pisces. And Saturn retrograde will be conjunct the moon during the full moon in Pisces. So the Saturn energy can continuing to come through here, continuing to give, bring us these reality checks and really ask us to put our money where our mouth is in a spiritual sense, to walk our talk in a spiritual sense, to take responsibility for our energy and to, uh, to really take responsibility for our spiritual journey. And with this, with this Virgo energy, with this Mercury retrograde and Virgo energy, to take responsibility for our mental energy and the ways that that influences our actions, to take responsibility for our emotions as well, and for our actions, and not only our actions, rather, but our reactions as well. And some people, it's like we're going to be feeling that energy showing us where we are still perhaps reactionary, where there are still triggers that are causing these reactions within us. And if there's still a trigger, that means there's still a wound, right? All right, let's see. This is also an energy, and I've been feeling this. This has been ongoing for a little while here, this energy uh, since the new moon in Leo, really, right? This energy of solutions coming forward. All right, so be prepared for those solutions to show themselves. And I actually wanted want to use the traditional Rider Weight Tarot again, clear, to dig into these energies a little bit more. All right, so let's get some more energy. Mercury retrograde in Virgo. What else? And I wanted to, that's right, I wanted to do this in sections. So we're going to do um, finances and career clear i'm hearing is the first so what what might mercury retrograde be bringing through for people or what guidance um or warnings does spirit have benevolent spirit source creator benevolence watching over humanity what guidance do we have for people regarding career finance career all right we have the hierophant so some people may be getting promotions during this time i'm feeling 
I'm also feeling, remember, this is Mercury retrograde. And so uh, for people who are getting promotions, um, this isn't going to be true for everyone. Some of you guys, congratulations, it's going to stick. Um, for others of you, this may be a situation where you want to like take it with a grain of salt and just be grateful for it, be happy for it. Don't think anything either way, but don't get attached to it because for some people, it's like uh, the energy may shift again after Mercury comes out of retrograde. And if that's happening, um, there's a lesson in that. And it is a lesson in, like we said, because remember the guidance was not to get atta be attached to it. And that's the lesson as well. The lesson is in attachment, if that does happen for you. All right. And it's like, uh, for some people, it's the energy of like the notoriety, um, the spotlight, um, the title. Don't get attached to the title. Don't get attached to, um, just try not to attach to any of it. Just allow it to come into your reality. And if it flows back out, just know and trust that that um, that was part of the process for right now. But some people definitely getting promotions. Let's see anything else on the Hierophant here um, for career. Yeah, three of cups. All right, definitely promotions for some. Ace of cups. Okay, you guys, wow. Wow, this is a lot of beautiful, a lot of success with career. Um, career and um, finance, I'm feeling for people during this Mercury retrograde. Yeah, lots that's worth celebrating. Um, fulfilling, fulfillment of wishes and desires, it feels like for people, like stuff that they've worked for. So this is that that caveat there about um, turning around after Mercury retrograde, that's not going to be for everyone. That might just be for someone. A lot of this energy as we're looking more deeply into it is like, it's definitely an energy of um, celebration and fulfillment. Yeah. For some people, too, it feels like I know this isn't necessarily. I mean, I guess it could be related to career and finance. I mean, if you're marrying somebody with money. But, like, there could be a proposal here, too, I'm feeling. Making something official is what it feels like. Something that requires witnesses. So this is so funny, right? We're talking about don't sign contracts, don't do any of that stuff. I feel like some people are going to be um, signing, whether this is like um, like a, contra a business contract or a, um, a marriage, because that is a contract, right? Really, marriage is a contract that we have with the state, with the government, it's a contract that we have with each other, but it's also a contract that we make with the government. All right. Um, we're not going to get into all of that right now. <laughs> Those of you who know where I'm going with all of that, you know where I'm going with all of that. So we have the Eight of Swords coming out here. What's the Eight of Swords about regarding all of this? Is this like getting in our heads? Eight of Swords, Eight of Cups. All right, this is interesting. I think this is where the retrograde energy comes in, right? There's all of this really positive. All right, so this is what I'm also feeling for some people. What I'm feeling is that perhaps even before Mercury went retrograde, something like this happened, a promotion or a, a proposal or something like that. Um... So for some of you, maybe you were accepted into school or something. Um, and now when Mercury flips retrograde, it's almost like um, you get in your head. There's a lot of, there's stress, anxiety. Remember when Mercury goes retrograde in the sign that it rules, we definitely, it definitely ups the anxiety factor and similar things. Um, it may, it kind of throws us for more of a loop because this is one of, um, one of the signs of Mercury's rulership. All right. So it's like, um, feeling like, do I really want this questioning? Do I really want this? I feel even more than do I want this for some people? I feel like it's like you almost want talk your want to talk yourself out of it because you're afraid of success. There's a feel of, Remember, fear of failure, fear, fear of success, it's really the same fear. Just uh, we word it differently. We look at it from a different angle, okay? So there's like a fear there. And so it's like uh, 
uh, it feels like for some people too, it's like the offer came comes through and then you have to decide whether you're going to take it or not. And this is causing you some anguish and it's because of this fear of failure slash fear of success energy. Got the lovers. Yeah, so for some people, this is now we're moving into we're moving into love energy partnership. But this could be once again partnership of any kind, making a decision, right? A uh, Gemini energy there, but the lovers and here and of course Taurus energy. But the lovers can also represent just making a choice or a decision in general. So this could be a business partnership. This could be um anything for somebody i feel almost like it's like you get an offer like you apply to a school or you apply to a company and you have to like move um there's there's like a and that's kind of what's got you in this fear and anxiety it's like the fear of leaving behind you have to leave something behind in order to take this opportunity whether it's an address whether it's it's being single right whether it's a business or a job that you already have something has to be left behind remember we say it all the time, your new life is going to cost you your old one. Any other um, king of wands here? Queen of pentacles wanting to jump out there. So we have male, oh, a wheel of fortune. All right, so we have male fire energy and feminine earth energy coming out. And this, of course, is blessings, opportunities, the next phase of our life, right? But this is like positive. This is like Jupiterian type of energy, the Wheel of Fortune here. Mm. Tell me more about the King of Wands. What do we need to know about the King of Wands here? Hold on. Clear. What do we not need to know about the King of Wands energy here? Okay, we've got the uh, Ten of Wands. And the Queen of Pentacles. Got Justice and the Five of Wands. Interesting. So this feels to me like a masculine energy that has had a lot. A lot that they're carrying. Right? A lot of burdens. Kind of like the weight of the world on their shoulders here. They've been really busy. Uh, just a, a, a lot on their plate and a feminine energy that's been um, really in this state of chaos in some in some respects kind of like um, at odds with people fighting for fighting for justice and equality or fighting for um, f standing up for for something that they believe is right something that is morally it's like it's like an energy of um that that energy of uh stand for something or you'll fall for anything that was in the the reading that i referenced earlier the collective reading it's that energy of like a uh, feminine energy really grounded and standing in her power um speaking her truth uh standing up for what's right even if it's causing discord it's like not being afraid to get in the fight is kind of the energy here And wanting justice being Libra energy also, right? But wanting and demanding that um, fair and just treatment. So this could definitely be like... Um, if this is a promotion and we're looking at clarifying that energy... Uh, this could definitely be the energy of like you really earned this right and you took on a lot this i'm looking at this in a couple different ways so we can look at this as our masculine and our feminine energy right knowing that we own and embody both we have both energies within us right that we're seeking to balance all right so the energy of like working really hard taking on a lot putting a lot of time and energy into something and really fighting for our position what we deserve and what we're worth that's a lot of what this energy feels like. And if there's a relationship on the table here between a masculine and a feminine energy, and remember, that doesn't necessarily mean biological gender, physical gender, right? Masculine, we all have these essences. Um, we embody one more than the other oftentimes. Um, so we, f we identify sometimes more strongly with one essence over another. All right. 
Um, it could be the energy of, of uh, one who embodies that masculine energy. Um, really just having, like we said, holding the weight of the world on their shoulders, having a lot of burdens, a lot of responsibilities, and therefore perhaps not a lot of time. And the feminine energy um, really getting to the point where um, they're tired of fighting for somebody's time. They're tired of fighting for somebody's respect. Um, they're tired of fighting to be seen and heard. And so um, if this is a relationship, like a dynamic within a relationship, I definitely feel like there's, there's, there's a call to action around that. Like, can we move through this energy? Can the masculine energy make make the space in their life for the feminine energy? All right. Um, and there's an energy of need, needing to make things right. And if this is a job uh, for those of us where it's we're not receiving the promotion or the 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 um, acknowledgement that we deserve, this is a choice point during this Mercury retrograde where like that's really brought to our attention. Like we come to realize or understand, like if I'm not getting this promotion now, I may not get it ever. All right, like we look, perhaps we see somebody else receiving a promotion or receiving a raise or um, some sort of recognition, and we're like, oh, okay. So I've been here twice as long as this person, or I've put in twice the amount of hours or work, and I'm still not getting recognized, right? It's like a patterns are being shown, and we're really recognizing those and seeing that we need to do something different. If we want something different, we got to do something different. That's what this Mercury retrograde is showing us and highlighting to each and every single one of us. If you want something different, do something different. Okay? And it's really showing us, like we said, getting us in touch with our emotions, so that we know and understand what it is that we do truly want. Maybe we were lying to ourselves, telling ourselves that I didn't actually want that promotion, right? Or it doesn't matter if he doesn't have that much time for me right now because that's not important to me. Or, you know, say somebody's fighting for equality in a job situation. Uh, perhaps we were at the point where we were going to settle and say, oh, it's okay. I'm never going to get that the treatment that I deserve here, but I'll take what I can get. And now it's like all of a sudden, wait a minute. No, I won't. Right? Like I deserve better than that and I'm going to have better than that. And if I'm not going to get it here, I'm going to go somewhere where I will. It's that kind of an energy. It's like really um, us taking the action where the action is necessary and like we said, uh, really mull it over and allow the 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 um, allow things to marinate during the Mercury retrograde. And if possible, uh, take the actions that feel right. Give it about a week or so, a week or two to settle afterwards. Uh, preferably, uh, really best if we wait until Mercury's out of shadow. And I'm sorry that I didn't get the shadow date for you guys. Um, if you were to look, look it up, it would just be whenever Mercury returns to 21 degrees of Virgo. That's when Mercury is out of the post-shadow period, where it's done retracing the steps that it, that it went backwards, and it's back to where it started the retrograde at. That's the ideal time, but we don't necessarily always all have that time. But definitely, if we can wait until Mercury is out of retrograde, we see the King of Cups here. That's that emotional energy. The balancing, ah, uh, yes, with the strength. The mastering of the emotions. All right, the King of Cups is a master of his emotions. He knows how to be strong, but also to feel deeply. All right, he allows his feelings to be a powerful guide and barometer for him. He is warm. He is intuitive. He is, um, he definitely has that balance with his feminine, feminine essence, right? And the strength, this is this card to me above all things. One of the definitions of this that resonates the most strongly with me is the energy of the mastery of the mind, the lion representing, being a metaphor for the mind here. All right. So there we go. Mastery of mind and heart. Just a little recap there. And tower on the bottom of the deck reminding us um, the situations that transpire are all guiding us into this deeper level of mastery of the mind and the emotions, all right? And they're showing us where it is that our mind is perhaps still our master or our emotions are still our master, 
All right, we want to be master of both. And that doesn't mean control freaks, right? It just means that we don't allow our emotions to completely rule us, nor do we allow our mind to completely rule us. This is about the balance once again. So whatever triggers us is going to be teaching us where it is that we need to fine tune something in order to bring this into balance and where either our emotions or our mind has become our master and for some people, this is just the realization, but for many, it's like the situations and events that trigger this understanding within us. All right, and a one final card here. <laughs> Got the tower with the eight of pentacles and the sun on the bottom of the deck, which is beautiful closing energy here, right? But this is also just further clarification showing us that like, um, these are powerful epiphanies or um, upsets, if you will. Uh, when it comes to things that we've invested a lot of time and energy into. All right. So this is just as we said, like we said, right? Realizations around jobs we've invested a lot of energy into. Relationships we've invested our, a lot of our energy into. Um, whatever it is, wherever we have put that energy, it's like there's there's some sort of shakeup coming for a lot of us that really shows us what whether this has value or meaning to us, is this, is this something that really resonates and is true for us within our heart of hearts? Do we truly care about and value this? And is it worth the energy that we're putting into it? And if it's not, and if it's not right for us, if it doesn't resonate for us anymore, um, there's, there's, there's some sort of energy that's coming to uh, bring that into our focus, bring that into our awareness so that we can step more powerfully into this energy, right? vitality happiness fulfillment the happiest card in the deck right here right this beautiful inner child energy coming through this is a card that can represent either leo or gemini energy all right beautiful a renewal that's what this feels like this is that thing that thing that you've been yearning for, that thing that you've been wanting and dreaming of. Even so, what spirit is wanting to let you know is even if there is some chaos during this Mercury retrograde, even if, because remember, the things that as humans, the things that we put a lot of invest a lot of time and energy to, these are the things that we become the most attached to, the things that we cling to. This Mercury retrograde is showing people where it is that we have attachments that are unhealthy. Where it is that we are clinging to things simply because we spent a lot of time, invested a lot of our time and energy into them. All right. And so a lot of times, even if that thing doesn't mean anything to us on a deep heart level anymore, we will cling on to it because we put so much into it. All right. And this Mercury retrograde is coming to show us where it is that it's time to cut ties. All right. Where it doesn't matter how much time we put into it because it's like um, it's like we've been working, putting work and work into this house and Mercury retrograde is coming around saying, listen, the foundation has cracks. All right. You've built 10 stories, right? You're trying to build another level, but the foundation is not going to hold. This is not it's not worth it. It's not go. It's not working. All right. And for a lot of us, it's like the universe is like, let's demolish this and start fresh. All right. And when we can release these attachments, when we can allow this energy to come into our awareness, allow these insights to come through and understand that it's not time wasted, even if we abandon the project, even if I don't like the word abandon, if we release and let go of this project, right? Whatever it is, this relationship, this, this career, this job, yada, yada, yada. Um, even if we release that and let that go, it wasn't a waste of time because we learned so many valuable things along the way. All right. It is not wasted. It is never time wasted. It's only time wasted when we know that the ex the time has come to move on and we keep holding on. That's when we start wasting time. That's the only time we, we start wasting time. All right. But that's a lesson in and of itself, isn't it? So when we can release that, when we can let it go, when we can allow these revelations to come through, allow these truths within our being, then that, that's when, that's when uh, that, that which we have truly been waiting for, we have truly been desiring, can then begin to manifest for us. 
All right, you guys, I love you. I honor you. I appreciate you so very, very much. I hope that you enjoyed this reading. I hope that you have an amazing Mercury retrograde. Remember, Mercury retrograde, uh, it is often feared, right? But it doesn't need to be. It is a beautiful time. And uh, if we utilize this energy properly, we can have, we can gain some really beautiful insights. All right. Um, Spirit's reminding me that Venus retrograde is going to complete around the 4th of September. So uh, we may see some, some uh, decisions being made around relationships uh, in the week following that as Mercury retrograde is ending. And like I said, if you can hold off at least another couple weeks, but if you know, this is what I always tell people. And I said this in the collective reading video that I referenced too. It's so important. There are two different types of decisions during Mercury retrograde. One is the, the reactive decision that comes from the flip-flop and thinking when the other side, the other perspective is revealed and you, you start freaking out, right? That's the reactive kind of energy we want to avoid. And the other one is when a truth that you've known and acknowledged for a long time comes back to the surface again and you finally get that push to make the choice that you've known for a long time you already needed to make. And in that case, I say absolutely go for it because you may, you may not have the balls, so to speak, to do that once Mercury retrograde ends again. So really um, take advantage of that energy if you feel like you are in a space where you are able to finally make that decision that you know and have known for a long time needs to be made. All right. Love you so much. Have a beautiful time. Uh, we will continue to connect as we move through these energies. Of course, there will be a v video coming out for the full moon in Pisces. I know I talked really fast through this whole video. That's because um, I, I didn't know if I was going to get interrupted or not. And I wanted to make sure that all of this beautiful information gets out to you guys. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, drop a comment down below and let me know. Share this with anybody that you think it would resonate with. And if you would like to book a private service with me, uh, you feel called to my energy, you want to work with me, I do personal readings. I do personal uh, tarot and astrology readings. I do really powerful quantum healing sessions, entity removal sessions, uh, past life regression sessions. All of that information is on my website, which is linked in the description box below. All right. Love you, honor you, respect you, talk to you soon. Oh, also before I go, I did want to let people know that I am doing another class for Synchronicity University. And that is going to be on the critical degrees. So if you would like to enjoy that class as well as four other classes by beautiful, powerful, fabulous astrologers, including Nadia Shah herself, doing a class on Pluto and Aquarius thus far, uh, go ahead and go to synchronicityuniversity.com. You can still, until the end of August, sign up for the Choose Your Own Tuition Rate as low as $5 a class. Uh, it is the September Speaker Series, so it begins, the I believe it's the second week of September, and then my class is the first week of October. So uh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be powerful. Um, just a lot of beautiful, brilliant minds bringing you all kinds of astrological um, insights. All right, that's it, you guys. Bye. Love you. Talk to you soon.